Hey guys, how's it going? Just come down here to the river to uh, take care of planting corn. So, Pat's down there disking right now in this big field. They got the two smaller fields over there planted. This guy, get this one here planted. Got our monitor on and got the air turned on. Got our takeoff, runs a pump for the air to run the planter. And we're putting some seed to ground. Gotta keep that marker over there in that row. Seed population there, it's 26,000. And then down here it shows these little uh, sensors in the planter back there that'll show if the corn's dropping down through, it'll uh, make the monitor flash there. So the moment stop, the monitor will go off and beep at me. And then there's something wrong with that row when they put the corn in the ground. This corn planter here doesn't have markers on it that fold out on the side. We don't have enough remotes in the tractor to run it, so we had taken them off from where we got the planter. We had planted with this set up along, for a long time. Uh, this is a piece of pipe there with a chain dangling. It's 30 inches off that pipe is from that last row back there. So you run that chain there pretty much in the last row and you'll be exactly 30 inches off. That's our guidance. No GPS, no auto steer, none of that fancy stuff. Just keep that chain in that row and it gets her done. I don't do a whole lot of planting, so kind of takes a little bit of getting used to. I did some last year, but not very much. Pap, Pap always does the plant. I normally stick the work of ground down.
see the edge of the field over there. That always gives you a good feeling. This is probably the biggest field we farm. Well, I know it is. Around 30 some acres, I believe. And uh, it takes a little while to get through. It wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't so stony out here at this end. You wouldn't have to slow up. You could just plant right through at constant speed. Whatever you have to slow up, that's where it adds extra time. But we still get it done every year. Just got me a little patient. Once I get down so far, I'm going to take three rounds around the field, plant the ends off, and run three rows following that side of the field instead of you know, straight back and forth is what I've been doing. So the rows will run together down there in some places, and that's where I'll finish up. They're pretty dirty, but I did clean them off a little bit just to just to get by. But yeah, we're almost done. It's a good feeling. We're right, the last uh, six rows in. It's 18 rows around the field, and we're done here now. This place. Hey guys, it's next morning here now. Got all that ground planted last night, and then we quit for the day. This morning, after we got the feeding done, got the tractor unhooked from the desk. Got it all ready to go, and I just finished walking up to the chisel plow there. We're coming out here to the flat here at home where we had that barley at. We're going to chisel that filled up and then eventually get through on a disc and get it planted. Now, the reason for tearing this up of just going in and no tilling like the rest of the ground here at home. This ground had a lot of manure, liquid manure spread on it in the fall there. And then we we're running on it, harvesting cover crop off, and all that running created compaction. Uh, this ground always does better when it's tore up. We've no tilled in the past, it does all right, but it's just does a lot better whenever you get through and take the time to chisel and disc it up. So I made one pass out through the flat and I come over here I'm going to do this offset. The field comes around here, we call that the knob. You got to do that and then I'll just be going straight back and forth. But I found a chain. I've seen it hanging back there, I figured I better grab it. Chances are there's a chain from in the barn or something. Got in the manure somehow. Then it got brought out here in the liquid manure tanker. That's my thinking. Uh, it could have been there for years. Never know where it came from, but if I had to guess, that's probably how it got out here. This tractor pretty much plays with this chisel plow now. It's got the new back tires on it. Before it would spin, it would have some give. Now she's going. You better hold on. As long as there's power under the hood, she's moving. Yeah, you know, one thing about this tractor, and yeah, you know, pulling the disc and pulling this chisel plow, we never had trouble with power. It's always been traction, and you see that a lot. This tractor had doles on it, and this thing would be a powerhouse, but uh, it's not, I don't have long enough axles for doles on it. See, I don't think the 2294s are really meant to have doles. 
put clamp on doles on uh, like the snap on doles or whatever they call them not the actual hold on hub doles the 2390 my uncle used to have it had doles on the back and they were the actual um, hold on to the hub kind of doles you hear good things about those snap on doles and you hear you know bad things about them i don't know you could possibly put them on here or else put them on the 2290 but i don't think it's really worth it since it has front wheel assist it probably would make a difference but like i said it probably wouldn't be worth it all the more ground that we would really need them for that 2390 my uncle had used to do pretty much all the jobs this 2294 does this thing here replaces that 2390 it wasn't around for very long because like i said in one other video it had engine problems using oil but i'm pretty sure that was just because it needed an overhaul which kind of wish just kept it and overhauled the engine because the price of tractors nowadays um that thing was probably valued well lower than what it is now. I don't think it had a terrible, crazy amount of hours on it, but uh, I don't think it had rolled over 10,000. I think it had like 4,000. I don't ever remember the tractor, but I just always ask dad about it because he had, he had known a lot about it. He said that you had to watch whenever you're pulling this thing because it had so much power, the tractor wouldn't give the chisel plow I had to, so you had to watch you get your know, brake stuff on it. Which this is only a nine chain chisel plow, uh, it's pretty small for some guys, but for all the more acres we do, it's it's pretty much perfect for us. It just gets the job done. It's a pretty heavy built chisel plow. I don't know, comparing it to a John Deere case, I don't know what John Deere's are like, but I've heard the cases, their tillage equipment in the past. I don't know how things are nowadays, but they're older equipment. I'm pretty sure they were built pretty light. This is a wheel rich chisel plow. Very unique name, I believe. I don't know if they still make them or not, but yeah, this thing's a classic. I bet it's an 80s or early 90s. Could be even early 80s, I'm not sure. I'd have to look. I doubt there's a serial number on it. It probably it fell off. The reason behind also getting rid of that 2390 was this tractor's only had a small 1000 RPM uh, power takeoff. Instead of 1000, 540, like all these tractors have now do, you can reverse the, flip the shafts around back there. I'm gonna park the tractor and uh, go to bed. Got milk cows in the morning, so I can't be out until here too late. That's gonna be about it for this video. I just finished working down the flat. Got all disked up. It actually worked up pretty nice. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty good to plan in, so we're gonna have to do that sometime. Uh, gotta go grease the disc up here. 
and then we can move it on to the next field. I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you did enjoy the video, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Helps me out a lot. Really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody that watches to the end of the videos. Uh, that's mostly my main viewers. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Have a good one.